preparing to live stream the webinar. Just chatting on YouTube. Uh, looks like it is upcoming. It's streaming live on YouTube now. Yeah. Yes. Yes, preparing. Now it is live. Chatting on YouTube. Okay. Yeah, it is working live, live now. Okay. Sir, should we start now? Already three, three, five. Yeah, in that yeah. Case. Welcome everyone. Good afternoon and a warm welcome to the Satellite Meteorology Weekly Online Lecture Series. Jointly organized by the South Asian Meteorological Association, SAMA, and Brilla Institute of Technology, BIT Mesra. I am Dr. Mohan Kumar Dash, Joint Secretary 1 of South Asian Meteorological Association, SAMA, and also the Executive Director of NUAMI. Today's program promises to be an enlightening and informative session as we delve into the world of satellite meteorology. We have an esteemed expert who will share their uh, insights and fundamental principle of remote sensing of the atmospheric using a space-based system. Our program uh, agenda as per structure to ensure a seamless flow of information and interaction. Now, I will begin with a warm welcome address by Professor Dr. Shomesh Shaddash, Secretary of SAMA, uh, setting the stage for an engaging session. Sir, you're welcome. Okay, <clears throat> thank you very much, Dr. Mohan. Uh, ABM Professor Ajit Tagi Sahab, the President of SAMA, uh, Dr. R.C. Vadia Sahab, uh, the Chairman of the Advisory Panel of the Lecture Series, and also the former ADGM of IMD, uh, Distinguished Speaker, Dr. Suchita Srivastava from IIRS, the Indian Institute of Remote Sensing, uh, Organizing Committee members, Distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you on behalf of the South Asian Mythological Association and Birola Institute of Technology, Mesra, India. Uh, we see that uh, since last week, uh, 50 more members have joined. So altogether, as in today, I could see 1,750 members who have registered for this course. Uh, from about 80 plus countries. So, because there are many new members, hopefully uh, new participants today. So I'd like to uh, repeat some of the things which I already mentioned last week. Well, this is the third lecture series for the capacity building of the people of South Asia and the member countries of uh, NAM, that is the non-aligned movement uh, countries. Uh, our first uh, Lecture series for training was on atmospheric physics that was conducted for about four months, uh, starting from January to April <clears throat> this year. The second one was a online training for three weeks on the WRF modeling system <clears throat> uh, that was uh, jointly with the CDAC, that is the Center for Development of Advanced Computing in India. Of course, the first lecture series was jointly organized with uh, the SRM <clears throat> Institute of Science and Technology, Chennai. And this one is a third online lecture series on satellite meteorology. Uh, this is jointly organized by BIT Mesra. Uh, this uh, lecture series will go on for 20 weeks, uh, started on 2nd of September, and will go on till 28th of January 2024. Well, as I mentioned last week, uh, at the end of the course, uh, we shall provide certificates to those participants who will attain at least 75% of the lecture. And uh, others who might like to get uh, some extra certificates, including the grades, like uh, whether they could learn with the score outstanding or excellence or very good, etc., then they will have to appear in a test which will be conducted at the end of the course. Uh, in today's uh, lecture, as you know, we are also streaming it on the YouTube. So, although you could not attend on the Zoom, can attend it on the YouTube. The YouTube lectures will be available uh, even after the lecture is over. That means it will be archived there. 
for those who could not uh, attend today online because of so many factors and one of the reason is of course because of the time difference between india and the many countries which are uh, somewhere in south africa or somewhere in europe or maybe east asia and so on uh, at the end of the lecture there will be an interaction session question and answer session so all of you all all the participants are supposed to write your questions in the chat box uh, our organizing committee members will pick up those questions at the end of the lecture and it will be answered by the speaker so enjoy the lecture and have a nice time thank you on to you dr mohan thank you sir thank you very much following that we are honored to have our honorable president air vice marshal retired professor dr ojit tagi sir i would like to request sir to give his valuable thoughts on this subject sir please Un unmute sir please thanks a lot mohan and uh, i join uh, professor someshwar das in welcoming all uh, the participants and thanks to the distinguished uh, organizing committee members uh, nasim muradi saheb uh, bhatia saheb and uh, the core team of the sama who has been working in background to conduct these series of lectures which has been widely i think now become popular and we as mentioned by somesh have a good number of registrations and also actual participation in the lecture series i am very happy with the the way the satellite mythology course was planned and being executed Uh, as i mentioned in my opening uh, nagar session also and the last session the satellite meteorology is not just focused to the weather phenomena it covers wide uh, spectrum of applications and um, such as uh, air air quality the atmospheric chemistry hydrology oceans cryosphere and uh, in our lectures which are being planned covers almost all aspects of the satellite meteorology no doubt focus is going to be on on the weather elements but it also cover um, all other related aspects also and today's lecture we are happy is being delivered by a young scientist uh, from indian institute of remote sensing sujitha and uh, i'm really happy uh, that yes we have now participation of young people uh, joining sama and delivering these talks she is uh, has got a background of atmospheric chemistry the especially the ozone part uh, the studies um, uh, using the satellite data and um, uh, among the students and participants who are interested you see this also provides a platform where uh, you can during the lectures can tell your doubts and even after the lectures who are interested in that particular field uh, there are resource persons are there uh, speakers are there who help you so it it is it is not a one time lecture which finishes here today itself uh, if you are interested it also opens an opportunity to you to interact and develop interest in this particular sub areas of, of the satellite meteorology so with these opening remarks make best use of this a uh, lecture uh, as um, spoken by dr someshwar das uh, that there will be a question answer se sessions feel free to ask uh, uh, questions in the chat box and thereafter also if that time doesn't permit i request sukita that she should be able to respond to you through emails and uh, your queries so once again make best use of it all the best thank you thank you honorable sir for your thoughts now i would like to request a dr sunita borma to introduce uh, today's resource person dr suchita shrivastava scientist sf irs iirs uh, good afternoon to all of you i dr sunita borma take this opportunity to introduce dr suchita shrivastava dr suchita shrivastava is a scientist sf in atmospheric science department indian institute of remote sensing dehradun she has completed her phd 
from PRL Ahmedabad and joined Nagar as ISRO Dehradun in 2012. Uh, her research work is mainly focused on the chemical and dynamical processes affecting the distribution of ozone and its precursors, gases over the Indian subcontinent using in situ observations, satellite data, and modeling. Uh, she has been a principal investigator of several research projects under ISRO Geosphere Biosphere Program and Technology Development Program. She established a trace gas laboratory at IRIS Nehradun for continuous monitoring of ozone and its precursor and carried out detailed research on source attribution of criteria air pollutant over the Indian subcontinent. She's been involved in lots of collaborative research work, uh, for example, with NCAR, Colorado, and Jamstack Japan. She has published several research articles in peer-reviewed national and international journals, and she has received Best Paper Publication Award by ISRS for her research articles. Uh, statistical retrieval of ozone and meteorological parameters using shadows observation and predictive transfer model. So this is a brief introduction. She has a lot more contribution to the ozone uh, air pollutants over the Indian uh, subcontinent. Uh, let's uh, hear it from uh, Mohandas again. Thank you, uh, Dr. Shunita Varma. The core of our program will be the lecture itself titled Fundamental Principle of Remote Sensing of Atmospheric Using a Space Based System. Now I would like to request today's resource person to take care of the session. Thank you, Dr. Mohan, and thank you, Dr. Sunita Varma, for the uh, kind words. And now we are going to start our lecture. And Dr. Mohan, can you help me in that uh, top of yeah, my... Yeah, now it is all right. Uh, yeah, it is, is all right. We can see your slide. Yeah, it is okay. good. I, I want that is uh, mute and stop video and all these are uh, showing. So somewhere, can I stop this? It came now. Uh, your slides are okay. It is visible. Slides are uh, okay, right? I, I can't see the top panel of my slides because uh, a lot of things are shown here. How to hide that? I uh, just want to know. Yeah, but we can see your slide. Just you uh, scroll down. So you just go try to go to the next slide. This is not able to see the top. Yeah, it's part. all right. It's all right. We are able to see, but see, not able to see the top line, is it? Yeah, I can't see it. A lot of things are coming here. Uh, um, like um, mute, stop, and uh, participants chat. All okay. these things are coming at top, so I am not able to see the top panel or top portion of my slides that I am asking you. Oh, so without full view, you can continue, but okay, if you can try once. Yeah, yeah, that is fine. That is fine. That is fine. So, good afternoon, everyone. And the title of today's talk is uh, Fundamental Principles of Remote Sensing of Atmosphere Using Space-Based Systems. So how to collect the scientific data? We can collect the scientific data in two fashion. Either we take our instrument directly in contact of the atmosphere and collect the data or to the target area and collect the data. And there is another way that is remote sensing. So in in situ monitoring, we uh, put our instrument directly in contact of the ambient air or the target area. Like here, you can see a radio sonde tied with a helium filled balloon and it goes upward in the atmosphere and it directly touches the air, ambient air when it goes vertically upward. So it is basically touching the air and calculating the temperature, pressure and humidity profile vertically. This is in situ monitoring method. 
And in remote sensing method, the instrument is sitting far away from the atmosphere, for the uh, from the Earth and atmosphere system, around 800 kilometer for polar satellites and 36,000 kilometers for the geostationary and geosynchronous satellites. And from there, they are receiving the electromagnetic radiation reflected from the atmosphere or emitted from the Earth atmosphere system, and then they are retrieving the geophysical parameters. So what is remote sensing? The science and art of obtaining information about the object area or phenomena through the analysis of data acquired by a device that is not in contact of the object area and phenomena under investigation. Science, because a lot of science principles are involved in the uh, analysis of the data and art because it depends on the intelligence of interpreter. What are the advantages of remote sensing? There are several advantages of remote sensing, like systematic data collection. According to the pass of the, according to the, sorry, I, I just got a call. Hello? Madam, could you please make enable editing? Yeah, one second, one second. Hello, ma'am, I am in your lecture. I will uh, talk to you later, please. Hello? Yes, Madam, just enable editing in the yellow bar. Yeah. Okay. So okay. it's fine. And if any possible full screen, I think it. Still, that uh, yes. screen is a mute and stop video, and all these are coming. How to stop oh, that? Okay. And... okay. I'm not okay. Able. Well, there is another way, but uh, you have to set in your PPT file itself. Like you have to open PPT file and then go to the slide show and click on the slide show, then it will show you some uh, another window in which uh, you have to uh, choose present by individual window rather than present by speaker, something like that. But anyway, you go ahead with uh, the way you were doing earlier. Yeah, but our side, I think it is all right now. We can see the full okay. view. Yeah, yeah, okay, I will. Uh, I have done it a full view, but uh, if they, if I am unable to read some top portion, then I will uh, go okay. in that mode. Okay, 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 madam. Yeah. Okay, madam. So as per your convenience. Advantages of remote sensing is the systematic data collection. We can uh, collect the data in a very systematic fashion. Uh, like uh, whenever there is a pass of the satellite, we can collect the data over the region which is it is sensing. Or if it is a geostationary or geoasynchronous satellite, it can collect the data at every uh, half an hour or uh, after every hour to uh, in a very systematic fashion. Then we can collect the three-dimensional information of atmosphere, like uh, many instruments provide vertical distribution of temperature, pressure, relative humidity, and many more, many more parameters. Then repeatability, we can repeatedly get information about the, the specific area, uh, both in terms of space and in terms of time. We can get the information over the area at different, different time. And uh, repeatability in terms of polar satellite, the uh, instrument goes and comes back at the same location and collects the data. Global coverage, polar satellites can provide you global coverage rather than only over a specific area. And monitoring over inaccessible areas, like only sometimes this is the only solution possible. Like if there is a forest fire going on or there is a tropical cyclone affected area, then you cannot send manpower and risk their lives. We can just collect the data using the remote sensing. So these are some advantages of remote sensing. Oh. So this is the uh, this slide shows the remote sensing process. So what our satellite senses? Our satellite senses electromagnetic radiation, electromagnetic radiation coming from a source. Most, mostly it is the sun where uh, reflected solar radiation is received by the sensor or scattered solar radiation is received by the sensor or emission from the surface of the earth and different layers of the atmosphere. So our sensor is sensing the electromagnetic radiation, basically, and then it is sending the data to the ground receiving station. And after processing the electromagnetic radiation data, which is received by the sensor, we get the, uh, after processing the data, we get the geophysical parameters, and then we disseminate the data to the users. 
So what is electromagnetic radiation? Electromagnetic radiation is a form of transmitted energy. Electromagnetic radi magnetic radiation is so named because it has electric and magnetic fields that simultaneously oscillate in planes mutually perpendicular to each other and to the direction of propagation. So here apply uh, this uh, here is shown where this is the direction of propagation and electric and magnetic field are shown here. And the uh, electromagnetic radiation is characterized by wavelength and frequency. Wavelength is the distance between two drops or two crests. And frequency is defined as the number of waves per second that pass a given point in a space. So the either the, uh, when we talk about electromagnetic radiation, either we say uh, wavelength of electromagnetic radiation or frequency of electromagnetic radiation. These two, para, uh, these two parameters are related to each other by a simple equation, C is equal to nu lambda, where C is the speed of flight, nu is the frequency, and lambda is the wavelength. And uh, here you can see that nu and lambda are multiplied and it is a constant. So if nu is high, lambda will be low. So here you can see the electromagnetic spectrum. Here it, is, it shows the uh, frequency as well as wavelength from gamma rays to radio waves. You can see here, uh, here you, uh, this uh, panel shows the uh, wavelength and the lower panel shows the frequency. So if you see here gamma rays, then X-rays, ultraviolet, visible, infrared, microwave, and radio waves are shown. The gamma rays have very short wavelength. You can see here very short wavelength. And as we move from gamma rays to radio waves, the wavelength increases. So here you can see short wavelength and here you can see long wavelength. So as I told, wavelength and frequency are inversely related to each other. Then gamma rays are high frequency waves and radio waves are low frequency waves. So if we move from right uh, left to right, the wavelength is increasing and <clears throat> frequency is decreasing. Decreasing frequency means decreasing energy because photon energy E is given by H nu. So it is directly proportional to the frequency of the wave. So accordingly, the energy of the photons are also decreasing. We are particularly interested in ultraviolet, visible, infrared, and microwave region. Ultraviolet and visible and part of infrared radiation is emitted by our sun and uh, the solar radiation comes and uh, interacts with our atmosphere and earth system and then it is reflected and uh, received by the satellite so reflected solar radiation can be used for getting the information of geophysical parameters and infrared and microwave is dominated by our own earth emission earth receives radiation from the sun and accordingly it uh, emits radiation in infrared some basic radiometric quantities are shown here. The basic uh, radiometric quantity which is used in remote sensing is radiant energy, which is given by Joule. If we calculate this radiant energy per unit time, then we get radiant flux. It is given by what? If we again add the information of per unit surface area, with the differential of radiant flux with respect to per unit surface area, we get radiant flux density. The radiant flux density is received on the surface, on any surface, then this radiant flux density is called radiance. And if the radiant flux density is leaving any surface, then it is called excitance. This per particular irradiance and excitance, these are expressed in watt per meter square. Now we are also adding the information per unit solid angle. So if you are calculating and differentiating radiant flux density with respect to a solid angle, you will get radiance. Radiance is given in watt per meter square per stair radian. And if we see the distribution of radiance with respect to wavelength, then we will get spectral radiance. So spectral radiance via is radiance per unit wavelength, and it is expressed in unit of watt per meter square per stair radian per micrometer. Spectral radiance is the basic parameter which is received by the satellite. We generally talk in terms of spectral radiance. Now coming to the dead body radiation law. At a given temperature, there is a maximum amount of radiant energy that can be emitted per unit time, per unit area of a body. This maximum amount of radiation for a certain temperature is called the black body radiation. 
a body that radiates for every wavelength, the maximum possible intensity of radiation at a certain temperature is called a black body. It is not possible for any body to emit more than that, more than that radiation if the body's temperature is same like black body. So black body will emit maximum radiation if temperature is fixed. <clears throat> The spectral radiance, we, are, we have learned what is spectral radiance. The spectral radiance emitted by a black body at temperature Tk is given by this formula. B lambda T, lambda is the wavelength, T is the temperature of the body, is equal to 2hc square by lambda to the power 5 exponential C by lambda Kt minus 1. This is the expression of black body radiation, spectral radiance. Here, C is the speed of light, H is the Planck's constant, and KB is the Boltzmann constant. As we can see here, only two are the varying quantities, lambda and temperature. The rest are constant. So we can also write this expression as C1 by lambda to the power 5 uh, exponential C2 by lambda t minus 1, where C1 and C2 are given here, temperature in Kelvin and wavelength to microns. This we talk about the spectral radiance. And if we integrate over the solid angle, we get the incidence. So the spectral radiant incidence from a black body is simply pi d lambda because radiance from a black body is independent of direction. Now coming to the X curve for black bodies at various temperatures. And now we will learn about the means displacement law. So here you can see a plot. This plot shows spectral radiance on y-axis and wavelength on the x-axis. You can see several curves. Uh, they are on different temperatures. So suppose, uh, for an example, we calculate the uh, spectral radiance B lambda at 3000 Kelvin. Then we will get a curve like this, where it is low, and then it will increase, and then it will show a peak, and then it will decrease again. If we plot that function with respect to wavelength. Again, we increase the temperature of the body, and say it is 4000 Kelvin or 5000 Kelvin, you will see different curves. Uh, uh, every time, um, the curve will show more area under the curve, and the peak of the curve will shift towards the lower wavelength side. So what do we learn from that? We learn from that that if we will increase the temperature of the body, then the total radiance emitted by the body will increase for every single wavelength. For every single wavelength, the uh, this uh, flux will increase. And the peak, the peak wavelength, wavelength corresponding to which the body is emitting maximum number of photons will shift towards the lower wavelength side. So the, this, uh, if we will uh, calculate the differential of B lambda with respect to lambda and put it equal to zero, and then calculate, then you will get an expression which is known as Wien's displacement law. Here, this expression is given: lambda max multiplied by t is equal to. 2897, where lambda is given in micrometer and temperature is given in Kelvin. So what does this say? That if you know the temperature of the body, then you can calculate the wavelength for which the body will emit maximum radiation. That is important. As temperature increases, the peak of the Planck function moves towards the shorter wavelength side which we can very clearly see here. 4,000, you can see uh, peak here. Then for 5,000, you can see peak here. And then 6,000 and 7,000, you can see the peak in the visible range. Now, the Stephen Boltzmann law, total radiant existence, which is the integrated over all wavelength. If we integrate the, uh, this spectral radiance over all wavelength, Yes. Now, from uh, starting from the very uh, very low value to high value of lambda. So, if we integrate it and uh, expect uh, the total radiant existence, here we are considering existence. So, pi is multiplied by d lambda and d lambda. And if you will integrate it, you will get sigma t to the power four. So, this where sigma is the Stephen Boltzmann constant. So, in that case, if the, uh, this uh, total radiant existence will be directly proportional to the fourth power of the temperature. Now, in our real atmosphere, in real, real environment, 
real objects are less than perfect emitters. They do not emit maximum amount of radiation. The emittance of a body is defined as uh, emissivity uh, e epsilon lambda is equal to emitted radiation at wavelength lambda divided by B lambda means emitted radiation at lambda TL, at lambda um, by a real object will be equal to epsilon lambda multiplied by B lambda, which is shown here. And where uh, epsilon lambda varies from zero to one. If it is one, it means it is a perfect black body, means it will emit maximum possible radiation for every wavelength. If it is a perfect reflector, it will it might emit zero, its emissivity will be zero. And if it is a gray body, then its emissivity will vary between zero to one. So this is some fundamentals about the electromagnetic radiation. Now we will learn about the interaction of electromagnetic radiation with our atmosphere. So absorption of radiation by the atmosphere. When our atmosphere will uh, interact with uh, photons coming from the sun or emitted by the earth, or atmosphere. So a gas molecule absorbs radiation of a given wavelength if the photon can dissociate the molecule or if the energy can be used to increase the internal energy level of the molecule. This internal energy level is quantized in a series of electronic, vibrational, and rotational states. An increase in internal energy is achieved by transition to a higher state. So if the photon will be absorbed, it can dissociate the molecule or uh, it can strip a electron from an atom or molecule. It is called, it is called ionization or dissociation and it happens in ultraviolet and shorter wavelengths, particularly nitrogen and oxygen and ozone. It happens below 280 nanometer generally. So in this zone, what happens, the photons coming from the sun, they interact with the molecules, their energy is so high, they uh, turn apart a molecule. If the wavelength is little higher than this, then electronic transition occurs. In the electronic transition, transition happens from lower energy state to higher energy state in the electronic transition. There are three types of uh, levels in, uh, inside a molecule, electronic levels, vibrational levels, and rotational levels. Electronic levels have very high energy gap. Vibrational have relatively lower, and rotational have very small energy gap. So very high energy photons are required for electronic transition. That is high, this uh, ultraviolet or visible radiation is required for electronic transition because energy gap between electronic trans levels is much higher. The visible range is known as a window region where very less amount of uh, transition takes place. And then comes the vibrational transition. This is most important, particularly from our Earth point of view, because vibrational transition require near IR radiation, 0 0.7 to 20 micrometer, corresponding to the wavelength range of peak terrestrial radiation. So our Earth emits radiation maximum in, the, in this zone, 0 0.7 to 20 micrometer. If we apply the V's displacement law, then we will come to know that according to our Earth's temperature, which is around 300 Kelvin, the peak radiation is around 10 micrometer. So our maximum emission from the Earth is happening at around uh, this uh, 10 micrometer. And this vibrational transition requires near IR radiation. And that is why the molecules which are absorbing in this particular vibrational zone is known as greenhouse gases. And you might be knowing about major greenhouse gases like CO2, it, ha it has absorption band at 15 micrometer. Then water vapor has extensive IR absorption spectra. It, uh, it, uh, there are so many uh, channels of water vapor in the IR infrared radiation. And uh, then there is ozone. Ozone is very important because ozone absorbs at 9.6 micrometer, which absorbs very close to the emission spectra of the, uh, this uh, emission peak of our earth. And then uh, methane is there and uh, N2O is there, nitrous oxide is there. So there are so many gases which absorb in vibrational, uh, uh, vibrational zone, vibrational transition occurs in this zone. Then comes the rotational transition, which requires far IR radiation greater than 20 micro 
meter. So vibrational, as I told, rotational transition require very, uh, this rota uh, gap between rotational le energy levels is much smaller. So they require very low energy and IR photons are, far IR uh, photons are having very less energy because they have less frequency. That is why the rotational transition occurs in far IR zone. Now absorption of radiation by the atmosphere. So here in this plot, you can see wavelength on the x-axis and absorptivity on the y-axis, right? So here you can see absorptivity is equal to one means total radiation, which is incident on the uh, that particular air parcel or uh, atmosphere will be completely absorbed. So if absorptivity is one, there will not be any transmitted photon. If absorptivity is equal to one, photons will not travel through the medium, it will be absorbed by the atmosphere. And if the absorptivity is close to zero, that means photons will be uh, will not be absorbed and they will be transmitted without any attenuation in the atmosphere. So we can see it in from ultraviolet to infrared zone. You can see it is uh, 0.1 micrometer to around 280 nanometer or 0.28 uh, micrometer. You can see oxygen till here and then ozone. So oxygen and ozone, these two, because of ionization dissociation process, they absorb all the photons. That is why near the surface, we do not get any photon having wavelength more than 280 nanometer. They are, uh, they are coming from the sun, but they are completely absorbed by upper atmosphere. And in the near surface, we do not get any photon which has wavelength more than 280 nanometer. Then comes the visible range. This visible range, if you see here, it is completely transparent. That is why we are not completely, it is a little dirty, but still uh, mostly you can see absorptivity is quite close to zero. That is why uh, we can uh, get the visible radiation till our surface. Then comes the IR range. So from 0 0.7 onwards, you can see several absorptive uh, absorption spectra of uh, ozone, water vapor, CO2, H2O, and ozone and CO2 and Again, it is water vapor. So you can see in whole IR range, water vapor is dominating. And there are some important absorption features from, from CO2 and uh, this ozone. As I told that ozone is very important. As I told you that uh, our earth radiation peaks at 10 micrometer. And near 10 micrometer, you can see a window region. So this is called 8 to 12 micrometer zone. It is called the window, atmospheric window. In this zone, only ozone is the absorbing gas. So you can see here that if ozone, ozone will increase, then our atmosphere will become very, very warm. So ozone is very important with respect to other gases per molecule basis because it is going to absorb more photons because maximum photons will be emitted in this zone at around 10 micrometer. So it is only punctured, this window, this IR window is only punctured by ozone. And here we have a visible, visible band and a visible window. And this region is known as IR window from 8 to 12 micrometer. And here around <coughs> this visible band, this visible radiation, it is 8, 300 to 800 nanometer. It is also a window. It is called visible window. It is called IR window. Now, here, here you can see the uh, Emission spectra of our Earth. Y axis shows radiance, and X axis shows wave number and wavelength. Wavelength, you know already, wave number is 1 by lambda or inverse of wavelength. Okay, and in this plot, in this plot, you can see some dotted lines. These dotted lines are the ideal black body radiation curves for different temperatures. It is 30, 20 Kelvin, then 280 Kelvin, 240 Kelvin, and 200 Kelvin. And this solid black line shows the emission spectra of our So you can see here very clearly that there, are, there, there is, it is not corresponding to one black body curve. It is showing different black body curves at different wavelengths. So why? Understand that there is one more plot given here. Here you can see the temperature plot. This is temperature plot and some not to scale uh, variation of temperature is shown. And this is surface, this is tropopause on y-axis. And here you can see 
I see different temperatures T0, T1, and T2. Right. So T1 is the surface temperature. T1 is uh, sorry, T0 is the surface temperature. T1 is the temperature at around 5 kilometer, and T2 is the temperature at around four pause. Now we will understand that why, why we see different spectra at the different uh, emission at different wavelengths. So first we are choosing the window region. Right now we learned that there is a window in IR band that is 8 to 12 micrometer. So 11 micrometer is an atmospheric window channel, right? That means if the photons will be emitted from the surface of the earth, they will not be absorbed by our atmosphere and they will be received by our satellite, right? So here you can see radiation emitted from the surface of the earth is not absorbed by the atmosphere and it is received by top of the atmosphere, received at top of the atmosphere by the satellite. Now, now here you can see 15 micrometer is the strong absorption band of carbon dioxide. And carbon dioxide is quite abundant gas in our atmosphere. Its concentration is significantly high, more than 400 ppm, uh, more than 420 ppm, in fact, uh, near the surface. And it, uh, then you can see its concentration is significantly high. So radiation, 15 micrometer emitted by the surface of the Earth, will be absorbed by the overlying atmosphere. Suppose you can consider here different layers are present in this particular vertical distribution. So here, this if the photons will be emitted from the surface. This will be emitted by, absorbed by this layer. Then this layer will again emit. It will be again absorbed by the second layer and so on. So it will keep them emitting and then it will be uh, absorbed by the overlying atmosphere. But we know that uh, uh, I hope you all know that atmosphere is continuously thinning exponentially our the number density of air molecules are exponentially decaying with increasing altitude so our atmosphere is thinning beyond some altitude you will see that atmosphere is so thin that it is not able to absorb the emitted radiation suppose for co2 it is around uh, pause. so a sigma uh, radiation emitted at top of the atmosphere um, at uh, will not be further absorbed by the atmosphere and will be received by the by the satellite right so if you see at 15 micrometer the curve will correspond to 220 kelvin which is here here you can see for 15 micrometer the curve is corresponding to 220 kelvin so basically if you will see here the radiation is coming from the 220 kelvin which is tropopause temperature now coming to the water vapor channel at 20 micrometer. Here you can see the 20 micrometer and it is absorption by water vapor. Water is more abundant, very close to the surface. And when, as we go up, up to three to four kilometer, the water is very abundant. Beyond that, it is quite dry. The atmosphere is quite dry. So maximum, so if you will see the absorption at 20 micrometer because of water vapor, then you will see it is absorption will happen up to three to four kilometer and beyond that, uh, there will not be significant absorption. So emission emitted by this from this layer will be received by top of the atmosphere. So you will get a curve corresponding to that. So what do we learn from this? Suppose satellite is trying to look at the surface of the earth. Then what satellite should do? What we should do? What should we should make? Uh, which type of uh, which type of uh, channels we should choose to look at the surface? If you want to look at the surface, choose window region. Window region means which is not absorbed by atmosphere. If you are willing to study the surface parameters, then you should choose window regions. If you want to look at the atmosphere, choose absorption bands. If you want to study the top of the pulse region or this uh, five kilometer region, then you have to choose accordingly. The wavelength you have to choose accordingly. <clears throat> Now, the another process which affects the radiation when it passes through our atmosphere is scattering, where the radiation emitted radiation traveling through the atmosphere is redirected by particles present in our atmosphere. When their size is very low compared to the wavelength of the incident radiation, the scattered intensity is scattered in all the direction equally. And this type of scattering is called Rayleigh scattering. Air molecules are the principal Rayleigh scatterer in atmosphere, and intensity is inversely proportional to one by lambda to the power four. 
for larger particle when the size of the particle is comparable to the wavelength incident then the uh, scattering is quite complex and it and uh, it is called uh, me scattering and it is happening mostly in the forward direction so it's the light will be scattered more in the forward direction. So understand that uh, a parameter is designed that is called size parameter. The scattered radiation is a function of moving angle, index of reflection and size parameter defined as 2 pi r by lambda, where r is the radius of the molecular particle. And according to that, the size parameter can be used to divide scattering into three regimes. Rayleigh scattering, when the size parameter is less than 0 0.1, size of scattering objects are much smaller than wavelength. Then me scattering, when size parameter is in the range of 0 0.1 to 50, and the wavelength of the radiation and the circumference of the particle are comparable. So here you can see Rayleigh scattering. So light is, the direction of incident light is this, but it will be scattered in all the direction. And if we consider me scattering, you will see that if this is the direction of incident light, it will be scattered in forward direction mode. And then comes the geometric optics. If the or size parameter greater than 50, the sphere is larger in comparison with the wavelength of the radiation. And this is the realm of uh, geometric optics where rays are reflected or refracted at the surface of the scatterer. So we learned two processes which affect the uh, radiation when it passes through the atmosphere. So we will learn about the radiative transfer equation means when radiation passes through atmosphere, what affects the uh, radiation intensity, radiance. So four processes can change the radiance as it passes through the atmosphere. Number one is radiation from the beam can be absorbed by the material. As we know, radiation will be absorbed by the material, then photons will not be able to uh, pass through the material. Radiation can be emitted by the material, Everybody having temperature greater than zero Kelvin emits radiation. So if, uh, radi if there is some uh, material, it has some temperature, it will also emit some radiation. Radiation can be scattered out of the beam into other directions, as we have seen, Raleigh scattering and me scattering. And radiation from other directions can be scattered into the beam. The beam is traveling and uh, scattering is coming from other direction will also join and increasing the intensity of the beam. So if we, in very simplified fashion, if we write the rate of change of radiance with distance dl by ds, then consist of four terms. dl by ds is equal to a, b, c, d, where a, b, c, d are given here. This equation is quite complicated, and we will go uh, in the component-wise, uh, we will learn about that. So what do satellite instruments measure? Do not, as we have learned already, that they do not measure temperature, water vapor, gases, anything in the atmosphere. They do not uh, measure any geophysical parameter directly. What they measure? Only the radiance reaching to the satellite. So they are just measuring the radiative energy which is reaching to them. Before reaching to them, the radiation is passing through the atmosphere and the surface of the earth it is reflected or scattered from the atmosphere and then it is reaching to them. So that if we integrate the radiative transfer equation, then we will get radiation, radiance, lambda, P is equal to zero, where P is the pressure. So pressure is equal to zero means of the atmosphere will be equal to contribution from different terms. It may be surface emission, atmospheric emission, then transmit, uh, this uh, uh, transmittance, then surface reflection and scattering, solar radiation reflection, scattering, cloud contribution, all these parameters will contribute towards the radiative transfer equation. So this is basically the heart of uh, retrieval. When satellite senses the radiance, we use these uh, uh, contributors and their properties to understand what all are the uh, parameters may be there in the atmosphere which are affecting the received radiance. So we come to the Beer-Lambert law, which tells us the extinction of radiation due to absorption and scattering processes. So we will go start with very simple uh, example, and then we will keep on improving it by uh, implementing the real time situation. So now here you can see there is a box. This box suppose is full of 
an absorbing gas and the number density of absorbing gas is shown by n and i0 lambda is the in incident intensity on this box and i lambda is the outgoing intensity from this box so as i already mentioned this gas in an absorbing gas definitely what will happen some photons will be absorbed in the process so i lambda will be smaller than i0 lambda the length of the box is n beer lambert law tells a relationship between all these parameters here the relationship is given i lambda is equal to i0 lambda exponential minus sigma lambda number density and multiplied by n so we know what is i lambda the transmitted energy then i0 lambda incident intensity exponential we know sigma lambda this is called absorption cross section it is given in centimeter square of absorbing gas at wavelength lambda and it is a function of wavelength and uh, this is an intrinsic property of the absorbing gas and it differs from one one type of molecule to other type of molecule we have seen that absorption is spectral right so all the gases are not absorbing equally some gases are absorbing at one wavelength other is absorbing at other wavelength it depends on their absorption cross section absorption cross section is effective cross sectional area of molecule for absorption of photons and is a measure of the ability of a molecule to absorb photons and we know number density of absorbing gas it is given in molecule per centimeter cube and it is the length of the box so this is very simplified uh, in very simplified fashion we can understand how the uh, photons will be absorbed by material which is present in a box but our atmosphere is not a box our atmosphere is open and uh, it contains many things right so we will understand general case in our atmosphere so first we can write the above equation as i lambda is equal to i0 lambda exponential minus delta where this delta is sigma lambda n into l sigma lambda absorption cross section number density and length of the box right now in our atmosphere we consider it a general uh, atmospheric condition then there will be many absorbers and many scatterers present in our atmosphere so very similar to the absorption scattering also affects the radiation so for a box with both absorbing and scattering properties one can decompose delta as the sum of absorption optical depth this is optical depth no this is delta is optical depth absorption optical depth and scattering optical depth right the slab contains k different type of absorbers or scatterers the total optical depth is obtained by adding the contribution from all the species right so now delta which was very simple in first case when there was one single absorbing gas inside a box becomes complicated here delta becomes sigma k where k may be different number of absorbers and scatterers present in the atmosphere and n is the number density of absorbers or scatterers so here sigma k and i sigma absorption cross section and i sigma scattering cross section multiplied by this is the delta when we consider general case in our atmosphere so if we want to see how much attenuation is happening in the atmosphere we have to look into each parameter separately now here it here a summation is given that number density is not constant in our atmosphere number density is continuously changing number density is exponentially decreasing with increasing altitude in our atmosphere so we have to integrate the delta from very surface to top of the atmosphere right so we are considering the contribution coming from different layers of the atmosphere that is why we have integrated this delta from surface to top of the atmosphere and i here a sigma should be there and ni sigma absorbing number density ni sigma scattering number density and uh, then bn this is number density and this is absorption cross section and scattering cross sections respectively now this is generalized one now our uh, equation becomes i lambda is equal to i0 lambda exponential minus delta where delta is given by this expression now radiation will not pass through the atmosphere always in vertical direction 
sometimes it will follow the slant path. Definitely only a, uh, the vertical direction is only a specific case when the solar zenith angle is equal to zero, right? So in when the radiation will pass through a slant path, then what will happen? It will make an angle with vertical direction that is called zenith angle. It's, uh, if it is sun, then this angle will be called solar zenith angle. It is shown by chi. Right. So what we know, we know distance L. We do not know what is the slant path which is continuously changing according to the uh, location of the sun. So what it will happen? Uh, this distance, if this angle is chi and we extend this line to this line, this angle will also be chi. And in this case, you will calculate this slant distance as L by cos of chi. Very easily you can calculate this. This distance is L. This angle is chi. This distance is L by cos of chi. So your generalized beer lambert law for your atmosphere will become I lambda is equal to I zero lambda exponential minus delta by cos of chi, right? And the ratio of I lambda, which is transmitted radiation and I zero lambda, which is incident radiation here will be transmittance. So it is shown by tau. Generally it is shown by tau. So here tau lambda is shown, which is equal to I lambda by I zero lambda, correct? So this we will use. Okay, now, now we will learn about the remote sensing of atmosphere in infrared, which is a very specific case. We are going to learn about atmospheric sounding. What is sounding? Sounding means what is the uh, vertical distribution of parameters? with altitude resolved information like temperature profile means temperature variation at different altitudes or your water vapor profile means water vapor variation at different altitudes. So in infrared portion of the spectrum in the absence of cloud, scattering is negligible, right? Scattering is absent. So it is a simplification of our radiative transfer equation. Radiative transfer equation contains so many terms. We are removing some terms and making our radiative transfer equation simplified. This sort of uh, uh, simplification is called Schwarzschild equation. So here we are going to learn about that. This is our surface of the earth. This is our radiation, which is starting from the surface and reaching to the top of the atmosphere. So according to surface emission, surface temperature, our surface will emit some radiation, right? Because our our surface has certain temperature. According to that, it will emit some radiation that is B lambda zero, where lambda is the wavelength and T zero is the surface temperature. This is Planck function multiplied by emissivity of the surface of the earth. Epsilon zero is the emissivity. B lambda is the Planck's constant at wavelength lambda. Now, if this radiation will pass through the atmosphere, we know that there are so many absorbers present in our atmosphere, so there will be absorption in the process. So a fraction tau zero gets through the atmosphere, means this fraction will be multiplied by this to get the satellite received radiance. So it will be epsilon zero, B lambda T zero multiplied by tau zero, okay? But at the same time, our atmosphere is also having different layers and all the layers are having some different temperatures. So they will also emit radiation and they will contribute towards the upwelling radiation, right? So our, our surface of the earth will be emitting and the radiation will be absorbed. Remaining radiation will reach to the top of the atmosphere. Similarly, different, different uh, layers, according to their own temperature, they will emit radiation and that will be further absorbed by the overhead atmosphere and then that will reach to the top of the atmosphere, right? It is happening for each layer. And then you will see, the, see from the satellite point of view, it will receive all the photons coming from different layers as well as surface of the Earth for that particular wavelength lambda. Remember that we are talking about the one wavelength only, B lambda, right? So a single wavelength, it will receive photons from surface as well as different layers of the atmosphere. So what will be the simplified radiative transfer equation? It will have only two components. So these two, this I lambda is the radiance received by the satellite, which is uh, radiance received by the satellite at pressure T is equal to zero. 
will be equal to epsilon lambda, which is uh, surface emissivity, d lambda ts, d lambda is the bank function at wavelength lambda and temperature ts, where ts is the surface temperature, and tau. Tau is the transmittance from surface to top of the atmosphere. Tau lambda is the transmittance at wavelength lambda and from surface pressure to top of the atmosphere where Ts is the surface pressure, right? <clears throat> Plus this is the term which is contribution from the surface of the earth. Now comes the second term. Now comes the second term. The term shows that there are different layers present in the atmosphere and they are also emitting radiation and then that is received at top of the atmosphere. So we will consider Planck function at different layers. So B lambda, Tp, where Tp is the temperature at pressure P multiplied by B tau lambda from pressure P to zero, means from that pressure, from this pressure to zero. This is the transmitters and then delta, delta by delta multiplied by dp. And it is integrated from surface to top of the atmosphere, means we are considering contribution from different layers present from surface to, uh, to the top of the atmosphere. So we are considering basically all the quantities. What is the use? Why we are learning this? Because we want to calculate vertical profile of various parameters present in our atmosphere, like temperature, humidity, and different gases. So for that, heart is this weighting function. This weighting function is basically responsible for that, uh, that we can get the vertical profile of parameters in the atmosphere. So how to do that? Suppose we consider an absorption band. So suppose this is an absorption band, here in absorption band is shown, it can be any absorption band. We have already seen many absorption bands here uh, in this particular slide. You can see different absorption bands. Accordingly, this is the absorption band of any gas. So uh, here you can see wavelength lambda, and this is the transmittance, zero to one. Transmittance one means the uh, photons will not be absorbed in the, in the path and they will travel through the atmosphere. Transmittance is equal to one, absorption is equal to zero. And if it is zero, then transmittance will be zero, means all the photons will be absorbed. When it is emitted, these photons are emitted from the surface and they are reaching to the top, all the photons will be absorbed in the atmosphere. So it is equal to zero. So transmittance is varying from zero to one, and we are seeing the lambda at uh, x-axis and there are three different lambdas are shown. Lambda, this is an absorption band. Suppose, for example, we are saying this is ozone absorption band, which is at 9.6 micrometer. This is very uh, center wavelength, which is very strongly absorbed. It is not a one wavelength only. The close by wavelengths are also being absorbed, but not that strongly, which is the center wavelength. So lambda three is the center wavelength. Lambda two is the moderately uh, absorbed wavelength. And lambda is poor. Lambda one is poorly absorbed wavelength. Okay. <clears throat> so now we are going to learn the concept of atmospheric sounding using the rate of change of transmittance. So here you can see the vertical variation variation of uh, mm, transmittance with uh, pressure. So here uh, on y-axis, pressure is shown from surface pressure to top of the atmosphere. And there uh, on x-axis, you can see the transmittance from zero to one, right? So now we consider the wavelength lambda one. What is lambda one? Lambda one is a wavelength which is not very strongly absorbed by the absorbing gas, the target gas. So lambda one we are considering from uh, here. So how the transmittance for lambda one will vary? As I already mentioned, that lambda one is poorly absorbed in the atmosphere. So the transmittance will start increasing very quickly in the atmosphere because atmosphere is not very really strongly absorbing lambda one wavelength. So a transmittance will very quickly increase and it will increase in the atmosphere and very soon it will reach value one. What is the meaning? If the value of transmittance is equal to one, means photons emitted from this level will be reaching to the top of the atmosphere, will not be further attenuated in the uh, uh, overhead atmosphere. Now we consider the second 
wavelength, third wavelength, that is lambda 3. Lambda 3 is very strongly absorbed, right? Lambda 3 is very strongly absorbed. So from the surface, if lambda 3 wavelength is strongly emitted, then what will happen? The photons will be absorbed by the atmosphere close to the surface. And that layer, according to its own temperature, will emit radiation and will be uh, absorbed by the next layer. Will again emit radiation and will be absorbed by the next layer because it is very strongly absorbed. Up to an altitude. At that altitude, the, as the atmosphere is thinning, overhead atmosphere is not that strong, not that dense to absorb lambda 3 completely. So the uh, beyond some certain altitude, that lambda three will start increasing, and then it will increase continuously and will be achieve value one at very high altitude in the atmosphere. Right. So and we come to the intermediate wavelength. That is lambda two. So very similar to this lambda three, but lambda two is moderately absorbed. So at intermediate altitude, it will uh, start increasing. The transmittance will start increasing and it will increase and then slowly it will achieve one. So lambda t, lambda two and lambda one transmittance will vary in such fashion. Now, what is the use of that? What is this weighting function? Weighting function I mentioned here is very important for vertical sounding. So <laughs> can you can see the rate of change of transmittance with pressure. So it is basically rate of change of this curve. Here you can see for lambda one, <clears throat> the value is zero. Then it, uh, it, it increases in the atmosphere. So rate of change will be very high and very close to the surface. So lambda one d tau by d p will be very high near surface and will decrease with increasing altitude and it will come to zero beyond zero. When the value is constant one, its rate of change will become zero. Similarly, if we consider lambda three from surface to this uh, altitude, the value is zero, means rate of change will be zero. Beyond that, if from here to here, you will see some change. So the change will increase because this rate of change will increase. It will come to a, a peak and then it will again decrease with increasing altitude and it will flow like that. Then comes the intermediate wavelength lambda two. It will also show a variation like this lambda three, but it will show a peak at intermediate level, higher than lambda one, lower than lambda three. Now we will understand how it is helping in atmospheric sounding, how it is contributing for the atmospheric sounding purpose. Suppose our sensor is watching the atmosphere at wavelength lambda three. Sensor is what, uh, sensing the wavelength lambda three. Then this particular contribution will come. This particular contribution will come. Means area, the vertical area from here, this pressure to this pressure will contribute in this equation. In this equation, this particular tutor, this particular is multiplied by this. So for below that, the brightness temperature will be multiplied by zero. So if lambda three is sensed by satellite, then this atmospheric layer will be sensed. If satellite is sensing lambda one, means it is looking at lower atmosphere. If it is uh, measuring at lambda two, then it is looking at intermediate atmosphere. And if it is measuring lambda three, then it is measuring and looking at upper atmosphere. So if we make measurement at different wavelengths in the absorption band of different gases, we can get vertical profile of temperature and humidity and many parameters in the atmosphere. So this is the concept of atmospheric sounding. How can we get vertical distribution using the this, uh, this uh, weighting function concept? So if we, I am, a sensor is making measurement closely lying wavelengths, lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3, and so on, it can sample lower atmosphere, upper atmosphere, middle atmosphere, and it can uh, calculate the uh, variation of parameter vertically in different, at different altitude. So why it looks like this? Uh, why this lambda 3 is not looking up uh, beyond this altitude and lower than this altitude? This is explained here. It is called weighting function, which is the heart of atmospheric sounding. Why weighting function has a peak at a particular altitude? 
Here you can understand that lower atmosphere, lower atmosphere meets lot of radiation because it has lot of material present. It has uh, air is very dense near the surface. So emitted radiation will be very high near the surface, right? But overhead atmosphere is also very high. So the radiance will be, the photons will be absorbed in the uh, process. And when they reach at top of the atmosphere, their contribution, which is shown here by the width of this curve, you can see very low. So lower atmosphere, strong radiation is emitted because of high atmospheric density, but almost all is absorbed by the upper atmosphere. So that is why contribution is coming from the surface is low. Now see the upper atmosphere. In upper atmosphere, little radiation is absorbed by the further upper atmosphere. But because number density is very low, little radiation will be emitted. That is why contribution to the satellite will be low. But at from an intermediate level, the maximum amount of content, this, uh, this is moderately emitted, emitted, but overhand atmosphere is thin. And that is why our radiation is decreasing. And that is why the contribution from this particular uh, level, this intermediate level will contribute maximum. That is why you get a peak at intermediate altitude because there are two contrasting features. One is transmittance, one is emittance. If maximum amount is emitted near the surface, the, so the emission is decreasing exponentially. Uh, emission is continuously decreasing and transmittance is continuous, continuously increasing. So these two are basically balancing each other and at intermediate level, we get contribution maximum. So this is heart of the, uh, this is the understanding of atmospheric sounding from the satellite. With this, I stop the presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you, respected madam, uh, for your nice and valuable presentations. Before go to the question of the session, I would like to request all the panelists to switch on their video. Uh, it is time for photo session. So kindly, please. Madam, could you please uh, stop sharing your screen? Yeah, yeah, one second. To do this. So uh, Dr. Deepak, could you please take uh, some screenshot? I would like to request everyone, please uh, switch on your video. Uh, Nasim Muradi, please. Uh, Dr. Kao Mo U, please. Lakshmi Ji, if possible. And uh, Dr. Sunita Barma. Uh, Nasim Muradi. Lakshmiji. Deepa, have you taken? Uh, Mohanji, can I start? Yeah, okay, I'll video? tell you. For a photo shoot? Uh, if possible, please switch on your video. We are taking a uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I have some ice problems. In short, for a photo session. I have got some eye problems. Yes, sir, I, I, uh, I have taken. Okay. okay, thank you very much. Thank you, everyone, uh, for your nice support. The hallmark of our program is the interactive question on the session, which will be moderated by Dr. T.V. Lakshmi Kumar, who serves as a faculty member at SRM IST and also the Joint Secretary of Sama India Chapter. The, uh, this session will allow you to engage with our speaker and delve deeper into the subject matter. Lakshmiji, now floor is here. Uh, thank you, Dr. Mohan, and uh, thank you, Dr. Suchitra, Madam, for uh, for the excellent talk. So I just read out the questions uh, raised by the our participants. Uh, the first question is: How is this helpful in understanding satellite data? Because during the data collection, how do we understand whether it's a black body or not? See, you have to understand that every body, body has some emissivity. So first you have to understand what is emissivity. Black body, if you consider in infrared, black bodies are almost perfect emitters. And their emissivity is very close, very high, more than 0 0.95 to 0 0.98 in that range, except uh, only few exceptions. So emissivity, if you know exactly, then you can calculate that easily. 
and if it is not known then you have to devise a method to calculate the emissivity so if you if it is black body or not that you can calculate by if you know the temperature and if you know the spectrum you can understand whether it is emitting the maximum radiation or not so that is, that is how it is helpful it is important because if you know the exact amount of emissivity you know what is the temperature which is emitting it there is a question from cedric so his question is what uh, uh, radiation by atmosphere Concerning the absorption of radiation by atmosphere, see, uh, there are different molecules present in our atmosphere and each molecule has different internal structure and there are specific internal structures and there are specific allowed transitions. So that is why every different uh, molecules present in our atmosphere can absorb different wavelengths. Like ozone absorbs at 9.6 micrometer. So it depends that it, it has an internal structure in such a way that it has an absorption band at uh, 9.6 micrometer. Similarly, CO, CO2 also absorbs at, at 15 micrometer. So it has allowed transition between uh, at 15 micrometer band. So this energy difference is fulfilled by that in photon, which is incident on it, right? And to understand that, you should understand the absorption bands of different gases, right? If you know what is the absorption band, and if you know what is the emission coming from the surface or the uh, top of the atmosphere, then you can understand how much uh, absorption will take in, play, uh, take in this process. Right. If, for that, you should know absorption cross section of the different gases. And if you know the absorption cross section, if you know the amount of the gas present in the atmosphere, you can calculate by using Beer Lambert law, you can calculate the attenuation happening because of that particular gas present at that particular, uh, which is absorbing at that particular wavelength. Thank so you, I madam. suggest you to go to the Beer Lambert law again, and uh, I, it is very easy to understand that uh, what is the if you know the incident intensity, you know the absorption cross section, you know the uh, distance which is traveling, and the uh, number density of the absorbing gas, you can easily calculate the you can easily calculate the transmitted energy. Okay, thank you, madam. Uh, there is a question from uh, Anchal Goel. Uh, the question is, uh, uh, what do you mean by forward and back, backward scattering is equal in Rayleigh scattering? Please explain. Uh, would you please uh, repeat the question? Uh, actually, it is said that uh, forward and backward, backward scattering are equal in Rayleigh scattering. Uh, See, maybe if the particle size is very small, the particle size is very small. If uh, the size is two pi given by 2 pi r and lambda is the incident wavelength, then the ratio is very small, less than 0 0.1. Then particles are very small with respect to the wavelength of incident radiation. In that radiation, what will happen? The radiation will be scattered in all the direction, regardless of in which direction the incident radiation is coming. Right? It will be scattered in all the direction, in uh, backward direction as well as in the forward direction. Forward direction means direction in which uh, the incident wave is coming and backward direction means opposite to it. So it is coming, going in all the direction equally, right? However, in me scattering, it is different. It goes mostly in the forward direction. Yeah, the, the other question is, what is the basic difference between reflection and albedo? See, albedo is means uh, reflection only. The part of the reflected uh, radiation by the incident radiation is albedo only. So it is reflection is the albedo. Albedo is basically giving you the reflected radiation only. Suppose in the ratio of reflected radiation and the incident radiation is 0 0.3, then the albedo will be 0 0.3. Uh, there is one more question from uh, Anchal. Uh, is the scattering is a result of absorption or it is individual phenomena? No, no, scattering is different, absorption is different. Scattering means it is just the change of direction of the incident radiation. Where absorption is photons is absorbed and it is not uh, redirected. It is absorbed means it is not uh, present now. It is absorbed by the molecule, completely vanished. It is uh, absorbed and uh, it is used in the increase in energy level of the molecule. However, in scattering, the photon is not absorbed. It is thrown away in different direction. So it is different. Thank you, madam. But the question from Sanjeev is, 
can extreme weather conditions impact remote sensing and data collection processes? Yeah, extreme weather conditions can affect the remote sensing. Suppose there are cloudy conditions, and IR radiation will not reach to the top of the atmosphere. In that case, it will affect. And there is a question from uh, Lenji sir. What is the cause for formation of short wavelength and long wavelength? See, it depends on the temperature, na? temperature of the body. We have learned the black body radiation law. If the temperature of the body is very high, very high, temperature is the very high, so it will emit the more radiation towards the lower wavelength side. Whereas if it is, it's a, the temperature is not very high, then its radiation will be more towards the uh, higher wavelength side. So our sun's radiation, which is around 5,700 Kelvin, it is very high. So that is why it emits short wavelength radiation. It emits mostly in ultraviolet visible and uh, near IR radiation, which is around three mic up to around three micrometer. Whereas our earth is not that high temperature. So our earth temperature is around 300 Kelvin. So it is emitting radiation according to its own temperature and its peak is happening at around uh, long wave side that is around 10 micrometer so it depends on the body which is emitting that radiation it depends on the temperature of that body thank you madam uh, the question a question from sai krishna uh, how does the sensors identify the hydrometeors uh, cloud water and cloud ice can be uh, used uh, dif in different using microwave also you can identify then visible radiation also uh, visible uh, radiation with visible channels and uh, you can get some information about that but i'm not very much sure about this detailed information on this cloud water and ice retrieval i'm sure there will be some lecture in the forthcoming session and it will discuss on that yeah, yeah. so the next question is, is it possible to know the height of clouds by satellite imager Yes, uh, height of the satellite uh, clouds can be inferred from the, uh, the satellite images. Actually, if you make measurement of the different at different wavelengths, right? Suppose you are making measurement like uh, it is called a CO2 slicing. Mm. Suppose you make measurement at uh, very close to the CO2 center center wavelength, CO2 that is 15 micrometer close to uh, the surface. Uh, sorry, it's close to the center of the absorption band. Then it will give information about the high altitude. Mm. So if the image you are taking, then it will uh, not show lower level clouds then if you are going towards the wing you will get more information about the lower altitude so you can get the vertical distribution of clouds in different if you are considering images at different pressure this wavelength region next question is by ankita can you explain the significance of the intermediate atmosphere with the weighing function again also how composition of atmosphere comes into this concept so, Bin, I am um, explain the calculate the water vapor profile from different weighting function. Sorry. The question is, sir, uh, the significance of the intermediate uh, atmosphere with weighing function again. Okay. See, when we there are uh, different uh, weighting function means it is weighting the different layers of the atmosphere. The emission is happening from each layer of the atmosphere, right? So according to its temperature, B lambda T, right? From surface also, from different layers of the atmosphere. As you are telling that you are interested in middle atmosphere, so you have to choose a wavelength which is not at the wing or at the center of the absorption band. So if you will choose the uh, wavelength at the intermediate absorption, then it, its peak will come, this weighting function will peak at intermediate level of the atmosphere, right? And if the weighting function is multiplied by the emission at that particular level, then it will give contribution from the middle atmosphere only. So that is how you can use the middle, uh, you can sense the middle atmosphere using this weighting function. Thank you. Mohan, can we take two more questions? Uh, yes, sure. Sure, please. Yeah, uh, may, one question from Subin is, can you please explain how to calculate uh, water vapor profile from different weighing functions? Yes, water vapor profile can be calculated using different weighting functions. So, see, uh, if you recall, if you are able to uh, see the equation, then the radiance received by the satellite will be coming from different layers of the atmosphere. And it will be function of two parameters. One is your uh, emittance that is uh, sorry that is a uh, blank function at different wavelengths right at but that particular wavelength at different uh, altitude blank function 
and the second thing is transmittance. So transmittance basically is a function of absorbing gas, whereas that this Bt, that is function of temperature. So if you are very well aware about the temperature profile, then you can use the waiting for this uh, absorption band of uh, water vapor. And in that case, you will get the, uh, what is the unknown, the transmittance. Transmittance at that particular wavelength will be unknown. Temperature is known. Radiance is received by the satellite and the temperature is known. So you know what is the profile of B lambda T, right? Because wavelength you have already fixed. Then you, what is the unknown? That is transmittance, right? Transmittance is unknown. So if you make measurement at different uh, absorb and different uh, wavelengths, which is uh, being absorbed by the water vapor, you can sense the lower atmosphere transmittance, uh, middle, middle atmosphere transmittance, and higher altitude atmosphere uh, transmittance also. So, in uh, by tra um, transmittance is a function of uh, number density of absorbing gas. So, from using this concept, you can get the vertical profile of humidity. Only thing is that you have to you you should know the temperature vertical profile of temperature, and the second thing is that you have to choose different wavelength. At the in the absorption band of water vapor. Yeah, I think uh, these are the main questions, madam. Many of you are which are citing uh, irrelevant to this. Uh, your voice is not very clear. Uh, yeah, I think these are the Can questions, madam. Question? Question? Right the I ask the question uh, while I'm on the panel. Is there time yes. for a little yes, question? Sir. Yes, yes, sir. Please, yes, Calcutta, sir. Please. Well, uh, Dr. Sujita, I enjoyed your lecture. It was very nice, and you are a very good teacher, I should say. Uh, one Thank question you. I have in mind that is some way, or uh, is somebody working on the retrieval of atmospheric pressure by remote sensing? You know, for example, we plot weather charts where the pressure at the surface is plotted globally. Can we make such a map of a surface pressure? Uh, by remote sensing. Is anybody working on this kind of a topic? I'm really sorry, but I am not aware about this. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mohan, I think uh, that's, the, that's the question and answer of the session. Uh, thank you, Dr. Lakshmiji. And uh, thank you, uh, our today's research person. This is really very interactive sessions and I have seen more than uh, 230 participants in Zoom and more than 30 participants in uh, uh, join on, uh, online YouTube link. So uh, finally, it is time for uh, to conclude the event. I would like to request Dr. Chantani Kripalini from uh, Purnima University, Jaipur, who will deliver the vote of thanks, how words will express our gratitude to the, all those who have made this program possible. Kindly, please, Dr. Chantani Kripalini. Yes, sir. I'm sharing my screen. Is it visible, sir? Sure. Uh, not yet. It is coming, I think. It's taking time. Yeah, it's yeah. showing. Yeah, it's showing. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. So as we are reaching to the end of the another milestone of the Satellite Meteorology Weekly Online Lecture Series, it is my distinct privilege to extend our deepest gratitude to the exceptional individuals who have played pivotal role in making the event and crystal clear success. On behalf of South Asian Meteorological Association, SAMA, and Billa Institute of Technology, Masra, India, I am proposing the heartfelt vote of thanks. We commence by expressing our profound appreciation to Professor Dr. Someshwar Das, Secretary of SAMA, for his gracious and engaging welcome, setting a tone of inspiration for our gathering. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Our sincere thanks extend to AVM retired Professor Dr. Ajit Tyagi, President of SAMA, for his enlightening address and unwavering support that continues to ignite our motivation. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Our heartfelt gratitude goes to Dr. Shuchita Srivastav, Scientist SF, Atmospheric Science, Department of uh, Indian Institute of Remote Sensing, Dehradun, India, for generously sharing her valuable insights and enriching our understanding of the subject. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. You have given a very in-depth knowledge of this topic. And our sincere appreciation uh, to Dr. R.C. Bhatia, Chairman of Advisory Panel, for his invaluable contribution, instrumental in shaping the success of this event. We also wish to acknowledge the contribution of Dr. Sunita Verma for her integral role in introducing our distinguished resource person. 
our gratitude extend to dr t v lakshmi kumar srm ist and joint secretary sama india who skillfully moderated and the interactive q and a session and fostering a vibrant exchange of knowledge special recognition is due to dr mohan kumar das our diligent success uh, session moderator whose dedication uh, ensured the seamless flow of this event i would also like to put on record the contribution of dr swagat paira convener of the lecture series dr divya prakash and another panelist for their contribution finally we express our heartfelt thanks to our participants attendees and volunteers who have joined us from across the globe your presence added immense value to this occasion in conclusion let us celebrate today as one more milestone achieved in the exhibitory journey into the realm of satellite meteorology we eagerly anticipate the forthcoming lectures in this series and the wealth of the knowledge they promise to impart once again we extend our gratitude to our uh, your unwavering support and anticipate your continued participation in our further sessions together we shall continue to explore the captivity world of meteorological satellites and their indispensable application with heartfelt thanks and wishes for a splendid day ahead thank you thank you so much thank you dr chantni for your nice uh, vote of thanks and of course thanks to you also and now it is time for uh, conclude the sessions okay once again i extend a warm welcome to each one of you and i hope that today's program proves to be a valuable and enriching experience for all thank you for joining us and without few further ado let's begin our journey into the fascinating world of satellite meteorology thank you thank you thank you sir thank you sir thank you thank you uh, somesh sir uh, should we conclude here or okay, you would sir, like to say uh, final word i would like to say something thais are your mute your mic is mute so anyway it was a great session and we would greatly like to thank uh, dr suchita srivastava for a 